Number 15 from the 2014 Advanced Hire paper. Integration by parts, all the way through by the looks of it. 10 marks here, first part. Use integration by parts to find the value of that integral. Now, normally when you're doing integration by parts, you look for one of them that will whittle away when it's getting differentiated. But unfortunately, both of these keep regurgitating themselves. So don't expect to get a final answer. You're just going to end up eventually back where you started. But that's fine. I'll just call where I started i. That's that integral. And then I'll go ahead. Choose one to differentiate, choose one to integrate. Well, I'll integrate that one and I'll differentiate that one. Then I'll stick to that pattern through it. So that means integrating first. That will go to e to the x. This one's not getting used yet. Now that that's had its turn, it's time to differentiate this one and that'll be negative sine x dx. So, so far I've got e to the x cos x plus the integral of e to the x sine x dx. Looks worse than I started with. So just do it again. e to the x cos x plus integrate differentiate. There's no need for all that stuff at the side there. It's quite a simple pattern. That'll be integrate that, e to the x, leave that alone. It'll get its turn in the middle, or oh, in a minute. Minus, now that's been done. Integral of sine x is, and sorry, the derivative of sine x is cos x, and there you are, back where you started. So what have I got all together? I've got a common factor of e to the x, I've got a cos x, and I've got a sine x, and that's minus what I started with. So I could take that over here, and I'll have two of them now. I'll just write it. Two of them equals e to the x cos x plus sine x. And then finally, I will be e to the x cos x plus ooh, a half of e to the x cos x plus sine x, and then something I hadn't been writing down all the way through. If you carry it in integration, there's a constant at the end of that. And so part B, similarly, so there's another four marks for doing more or less the same thing. Find an expression for i to the n, with the only difference this time is it's cos of this multiple of the angle. A little note at the side just saying, of course, that n isn't zero, because otherwise it would just be e to the x and that would be the end of it. Well, same as before, integrate, differentiate. Now, it's not entirely parallel to the solution before because the ends will be in different places, so I'll just go through it. So that'll be e to the x, leave it alone, cos nx, minus the integral of e to the x sine nx dx. Now that was negative, so that can change to a plus, and it was a function of a function, so when you're differentiating it, you'll multiply by that coefficient. So, that's e to the x cos nx plus n lots of, and then just do it again, integrate, differentiate, e to the x sine nx minus the integral of e to the x, now differentiate that back to cos nx dx, but of course multiplied by the derivative of that little linear term there, so multiplied by n, and that means I've got e to the x times cos nx plus n lots of sine nx minus, now it'll be n squared, but that's just what I started with. So that's i to the n. Yes, it is annoying when you keep saying i to the n instead of i n. Now bring it over to this side. I've got one here, I'm going to bring n squared over, so I've now got n squared plus one lots of i to the n Lovely. equals this thing e to the x cos nx plus n sine nx. I know it should be popping the integral in. Uh, sorry, popping in the constant, but I'll put it in at the end. So i to the n equals 1 upon n squared plus 1 e to the x cos nx plus n lots of sine nx. Almost forgot. Again plus C.
So to the final bit, there's only two marks now for actually doing the calculations, which can sometimes take ages. Hence evaluate this thing. Hence evaluate the integral from 0 to pi upon 2 of e to the x cos 8x dx. Well that will be, now I'm going to do an evaluation. So I'm going to evaluate this side so the constant will disappear now for sure. So that will be now n is equal to 8. So we'll start off with 1 over 8 squared plus 1 e to the x times cos 8x plus 8 sine 8x evaluated from 0 to pi up in 2. Right, what have we got? Well, that's a common factor to both parts, so that's 64, 65, so it's 1 over 65 times, now, evaluated at pi up in 2, so e to the pi up in 2, if I left myself enough room here, times cos, and 8 halves are 4, so it's cos 4x plus 8 sine, again, 8 times that will be 4x, we may have to start writing smaller, evaluated at 0, e to the 0 times and that will be cos 0 plus 8 sine 0. Just made it. So that's 1 over 65 times e to the pi upon 2. Now what's this part? Now the sine of... Oh, I mean pi there, of course. Right. 4 pi, that's a complete wavelength. That's back to 1. So I'll be 1. Of course, when I say a complete wavelength, I mean it takes you to the end of a complete wavelength. Complete wavelength, that'll be back to zero, so that's just plus zero, minus e to the zero is just one. Again, that's one, and that part's zero. So altogether, you've got one sixty-fifth of, that's one law of e to the pi upon two, minus one. For the exact answer. Now, if you want a decimal equivalent, just to be annoying, then what would that be? Just use your calculator. 0 0.0586227 and so on.